What is going on? It is Christmas break on thedewatt.com and I hope everyone had a good Christmas. I know I've been hanging around the house perusing Netflix, mainlining Christmas tree cakes, trying on all kinds of different hats. You serious, Clark? And of course, put miles on the Keurig. Now over this Christmas break, I spent a lot of time thinking outside the single cake cup box. And since then, I gotta say that this is one of the more versatile kitchen appliances I've seen since I learned how to wash clothes in the dishwasher. I mean, yeah, you can spend a lot of time trying every one of the cake cups they make, and there are hundreds of them. There's even herbal tea for some reason, but who the hell drinks herbal tea? I'm a dude. But you can spend a lot of time drinking all the coffees. I mean, I've got a half dozen here, and that's just in our own house. But even that becomes no more spectacular, spectacular than the built-in ice maker of a refrigerator over time. That's why I decided to go through, scour the internet, scour blogs, find out what I could find. And from my own experiment over the weekend and scouring the internet and the blogs, I found out just what this thing has under the hood, a lot of the tips and tricks, and the life hacks. And not, of them, not all of them involve coffee. The first one, simplest one I think, is the, uh, you know, you can just make your own. With this, you insert it, you put your coffee in this filter, you put it back, you know, you scoop it, put your coffee, you have to have a regular, a big can of coffee like the old people use. You know, back in the day, put a couple of teaspoons, tablespoons in here, lock it up. Just gotta pop this bad boy out. Back in, cup in, boom, you're good. And it makes just like a regular cake cup maker. And you can do it a couple of times. It comes out, put the regular one back in, throw cake up in there, close it like normal. That's probably the simplest one. I think everyone should have the uh, should have this attachment for it, just in case you do run out of cups one day. You've always got you know you got a backup. You got some decent coffee to make. You don't have to worry about going to McDonald's or something and getting a getting a cup from there. Now during some of my online searches, I noticed that there's a lot of hate and discontent toward the Keurig and the K cup because a lot of people think these K cups take up a lot of waste because they're only good for one time use. And that's just wrong. During my experimenting, I, dis I discovered that you could use either one of these settings, small, medium, or large, up to three times per cup. Now that, mostly with a dark and medium roast, I don't know about a light roast, but we mostly keep the dark and medium because light's just, might as well be drinking water at that point. Now I mentioned the small, medium, and the large setting. The small setting on a cake cup is between two thirds of a cup and three quarters of a cup, depending. I don't know what makes a difference, but it fluctuates just a little bit. Maybe it's just depending on the steam that comes off of it. Medium setting is a cup, and the large setting is one and one third cup. Now with that knowledge, you can do a lot of stuff. Now you don't have to use just the grandpa's old coffee mug anymore, even though, even though it's still a good go-to on the weekends. But through the week, I go to this 24 ounce turbis tumbler. Now it will hold two larges. But I usually go for a large and a small just to keep them spilling. It'll come up to, it'll come up to about right there on it, and I won't, it won't spill out of the cup holder or anything. And I can generally, if I'm, if I'm home on weekend, I can refill that thing twice, or get get two fillings out of it, not three times, because that that's stretching the cup a little too much, and it ends up too weak for me. But that, but that same concept is also good for. The big thermos that some guys carry on jobs, construction workers. And I carry this one deer hunting a lot, or used to. And it will hold, it will hold two larges, two larges and a small. And I could probably squeeze three larges in it, three larges in it, but it would lid would be able to shut. And I could refill that one once. Second time would be a little bit weaker because it's stretching a little bit thin, but you'd still get it out of it. Now when I first started trying to use the bigger cups, the tumbler, and the thermos, the question came up, how do I get the bigger cups up underneath it? Well, this little thing comes out, and the turbos will fit under it just by a little wedge, but you can, you can get the thing in there, put them in there twice. You have to take it out each time to start it back, and that's how that works. Most of them. Most of them are. Most of the bigger cups will fit under there if you take the you take the catch catch cup out of there. But as for the uh, as for the thermos, 
That's how I'm gonna fit. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna fit it all, see? I even... So with a the thermos, you've got to, you gotta get grandpa's old coffee mug back out, fill it up, and once it's full, they'll pour it in as it goes. It shouldn't spill if you do it over the sink. If it does, oh well. But that's how that's how that works. I know, I know some of you are watching that thinking, well, it's all good and dandy, but how am I gonna get this giant cup underneath it? Most of them will fit. If they don't, just transfer it. Now you fruit fruit coffee shop, Starbucks coffee. You're gonna love this. They make a cafe vanilla, cafe caramel, cafe mocha. Cake up. It tastes just like what you get in the coffee shops, and you can make them. You can make them by themselves in an individual cup. But I discovered if you take a regular cup of just a medium coffee, throw it in there, throw it in there under large, get a get a bigger cup or a large cup in, take it out, put the vanilla mocha caramel in it and run that through under small it'll mix up perfectly and all the flavors will be kind of diluted with the other cup of coffee you know the coffee will be diluted by the vanilla the vanilla will be a little bit spread out and it won't be as strong because it's a little bit strong when you run it by itself but done like this it's pretty dang good i tried it yesterday i was walking around the house like like trying to wrap my screenplay with some coffee shot like, mm, yes i'm gonna get my mocha latte yes but that does work and it's I plan on trying it again if I can get some more of them, but I've used up about half, I've used up, I've only got three left. After, you know, not counting what I just used, I've only got two left now, and I have to go get another box after this is over, so I hope you're happy of wasting all my coffee trying to do this. <laughs> now I'm stepping outside the conventional coffee box right now. Got some Swiss Miss hot chocolate which calls for three quarters cup of hot water in a cup. And it just so happens, as we discussed before, that the small button is three quarters, right around three quarter cup hot water. What are we gonna do? Tear the bag, pour it into this, in the cup, and the end of this. I pour it into the cup. Run the small hot water, so it only takes a second. And once it comes out, you know, it's just a reason to me just to eat some marshmallows, I think. It's not a bad thing, but it ain't marshmallow. Of course you start. Don't take much. It mix when it poured it mixed in there a lot. Stir. Handful of mallows. Boom. It's the hot chocolate. No boiling, no microwave, just there it is. That's one of my favorite things about it, because used to it took 30 minutes to make hot chocolate, not anymore. You know how they say necessity is the mother of invention? Well, a few days ago, the Alabama bloodline in me kind of caught up with me, and I had to get a tooth pulled. This so that made about three days of having to eat soft food off one side of my mouth, and I'm still doing a one side thing, but I've moved on to bigger and better things. And I found that oatmeal, oatmeal is one of my biggest pals in this, because I can just make it any time of the day and it's good. And I learned how to make it in the Keurig with the Keurig, not in it. You can't just run it through the, run it through the tank, that'd be kind of weird. But you can do it, do it three ways. The first way is, you know, you put it in here, hit the small button, the small setting, because it, it is two-thirds cup, and the oatmeal pack calls for two-thirds cup. Run it through, get the water, pour the oatmeal in, hit the microwave with it. Now that, that that's the way I did it at first, until I realized you could just run a small setting through it, get the water in the bowl, and when you do it without the microwave, you only need a half a cup. So you gotta just pour some of, just a little bit of that, an ounce or two, not much, just a splash. And pour it oatmeal in it, stir it, and you're ready to eat. 
and that was pretty sweet. And I like it. I do that way just because it makes it thicker. But in a pinch, in a pinch, you can run the two thirds cup through it in a small setting. Pour the oatmeal in it, stir it up, and eat. No pouring, no anything. And that's the way. That's one of the ways I did it a lot of the times. Now you can do it either way. If you if you just pour the oatmeal in, hit small, and go stir it up, you really won't notice the difference. But if you like it thicker, like I do, pour just a little bit of it out, and it'll be. It'll be perfect oatmeal and you won't have to do any measuring, any anything. That's what I like about it. That, that may be one of my favorite hacks, life hacks, tricks, tips and tricks about this because it's actually something I can eat. I, don't, I can make like a whole breakfast just by lifting the lid three times. But that is the curing. I love this sucker. I wouldn't trade it for anything.